you know, our next presentation is going to be specific to the University of Toledo, and it's a uh, follow-on presentation to what was done at Syracuse University on a smaller scale in a different format. Uh, Gem Energy and its factory in Wallbridge, um, Ohio, fabricated an integrated system that's designed to be put on a rooftop or in a parking lot. So that should open up large uh, markets that were previously inaccessible due to lack of space. So our next speaker, uh, Michael Green, the um, uh, Director of Energy Management here on campus, is uh, going to be giving a presentation. And uh, Mike and Chuck Leonard's support was critical to this project moving forward. Uh, and this uh, process started almost two years ago. So um, Mike, thank you. Thanks, Bill. I'd like to start off by thank you and um, welcome you all to the University of Toledo. Uh, Dr. Nagy started off with talking about uh, engineering here. I graduated from UT. Um, I'm old Toledo graduate from Whitmer of 85. Um, been doing energy here at UT for 10 years. A lot of what you're going to see is basically just practical. If you want to know nuts and bolts stuff, I, I'm a guy you talk to. Basically, it's stuff that we're doing here at UT with sustainability as our focus. So um, sustainability is kind of, if some of you were Boy Scouts, um, there might be one, two Girl Scouts in the room. Anyways, uh, it's the fate of engineers. Uh, when you leave your campsite, you leave it the way you found it. You don't leave a pile of trash behind. You don't uh, destroy what was there. Uh, if you cut down one tree, you might plant five trees, that kind of thing. Not that I'm a tree hugger, but the point is I've got four kids. I'd like to see them, my grandchildren, everybody else. I'm sure the rest of you feel the same. So things that we do here at the university, things that you're going to see are things that we've already put in place. It's all about sustainability. We want to leave it behind better than what we found it. We invest a lot of capital in these kind of fun projects. Now, the slides that I'm going to show you have a lot of flash through them. And instead of, because I'm between you and what are y'all, about 10 elephants in weight and lunch, I'm going to kind of move through these pretty quick. Uh, you're going to get them online or however Sam's going to distribute them at the other end. So if you want to go back through. But what we're looking at here is outside of R1 here off of uh, Door Street, that's first generation, first solar cells. Uh, those panels were used to uh, power an electrolyzer a few years ago. And one of my coworkers, uh, Sandrine Mumbenga in the back there, hey Sandrine, um, she was a grad student here and worked on the electrolyzer project. Uh, cool thing is basically you're taking the sun, you throw it to an electrolyzer, it splits off the hydrogen. We put the hydrogen into a car, Marcy Kapner, a local rep, she drove the car around campus. Um, we're always looking for new things like that. We have a whole department over here working on that. Um, that's just one example. Um, going on with basically we're going to look at a few things on main campus. We've got Health Science Campus and we've got Scott Park. Scott Park's Innovative Technology. Um, we have a mission from the governor to reduce our utility usage and our greenhouse gas by 20 percent over here. Uh, the final slide will show you how good we're doing here. Um, Scott Park, interesting thing. Um, the solar field here and here, we were the largest in Ohio. We had some bragging rights for a little bit of time there. That's a one megawatt field. Uh, there's a wind turbine in there. Uh, there's a little uh, 4KW on the roof. And yes, this will all get back to cogen. Um, that's the little one we put on the roof a few years ago. Fun thing, I don't know if any of you guys have uh, people like permitting these. That's always a challenge. Get your permits in early. Um, basically, some of these products, and this is just a cool picture, the little one on the roof, the manufacturer came to us and said, hey, we want to set up a demo site and put our product on your campus. We said, okay. The big one in the back, uh, when Dr. Nagy was up here, Dr. Afja wanted to put three of those out in Lake Erie and float them. I don't know where that uh, project's at right now, but basically the two bladed, they, they take it out, it's got a big concrete block, they push it off a barge, and it pops up out of the water. Um, it's so that the water can freeze under it. When you're going around main campus, there's a few things that you can see here. Um, basically, uh, we have uh, the Fetterman, which is a geothermal field. Does everybody understand geothermal? Uh, yes. A couple weeks ago, I, I hit uh, the, the Green Town presentation, and I brought up Cogen here, and I never explained what Cogen was. 
a lot of normal people don't understand. They say, normal, excuse me, you guys aren't abnormal, um, <laughs> women included. Um, <laughs> over here at Stranahan, we have a, a green roof. You do have to boost the structure, it reduces your carbon footprint. Um, the Fetterman uh, is a very cheap building, but with geothermal, you got to remember it's basically just a battery. So that if you take all the heat out of the ground, you got to put it back in, or you're looking for a balanced equation. In our Fetterman, we only temper the building. It's basically uh, uh, about 50 degrees in the winter and uh, 80 degrees in the summer. Uh, the crossings, we put a new chill water plant in there. We have uh, our main chill water plant up at uh, um, uh, the field house. It's in the middle of the field house, which is a classroom building. You can stand right next to 6,000 tons of cooling and you don't even know it. Um, centralized utilities, I could give a whole presentation on that for our campuses. It's a smart way to go. Uh, we're getting about 50% uh, diversity on our chill water. So if you had to put 100 tons in someplace, if you're on a chill water plant, at least on this campus, you're only looking at 50 tons of connected load. Um, our new steam generators are unmanned. Basically, we uh, uh, flash the uh, water back to steam, and that's how we're uh, powering the campus. We're also doing that at Health Science, too. And then we um, reduced uh, our use of coal over there. We have a coal-fired power plant that is uh, on the back burner right now. When you're running around campus, uh, you're going to go over to see the uh, Cogen uh, application here. Uh, we have LED lights all over. Our campus is 99.9%. .9%. You might see an outside wall pack on a building. Basically, we went back and we made a deal with the manufacturer, and uh, in this case, it was Beta LED, and um, we set a base price, and then we bid it locally, and we ended up doing the whole campus. Um, it's better light and uh, we, we cut the power around here by a lot. Anybody could do this, any manufacturing company, any other campus. Uh, over at the Health Science, I'm working on putting in a chill water plant over there. Uh, there's a picture of our steam generators. Those happen to be uh, a thermogen, uh, thermogenic out of Canada. Um, another picture uh, of the LED. Okay. Let's get uh, lead. Basically, the field house was gold. Uh, Savage, everybody know lead? Anybody care about lead? I'm moving on then. <laughs> Basically, we're, we're trying to get silver on any large new project. You can go after uh, that sustainable design without getting the lead criteria. And I'd recommend that everybody at the minimum recycle, use low VOC products when you're building, because it's really no cost now. Uh, we also have several other projects that we've got coming up uh, that are going to be lead silver. Our transit services around here, you'll see our buses. I could show you, uh, we've got a little icon. I don't know if Syracuse does this. We've got a little icon so that you can, uh, a little app that you can load and find out where our buses are at. So if you wanted to take public transportation around campus, park your car, take a bus. Um, mass transportation really isn't used here very much in the United States because we're too wealthy for it, I guess. So, you know, 2.3 cars to a family. Getting to the cogen at the computer center, um, uh, what was that, about a year and a half ago? Yeah. This project came up, it's part of the Third Frontier. Um, basically half the money is Third Frontier state money, right? Half's from Third Frontier, half was from the University of Toledo. And uh, the great thing is, um, and JD Arms in the back, we were looking at our, our uh, computer plants we were looking at how to um, make them, uh, Larry, what's, what's that called, the third, uh, you get different levels of computer, third, yeah, tier, tiers one, two, and three. We were looking for tier three. We're looking for having something that if the grid goes down, we're fully backed up. This cogen module does that for us. So uh, we're also looking at an application for over at the hospital too, to having our hospital 100% backed up power cool thing is, is if you buy your backup, like was just shown, as a generator, then uh, especially the cogen, then you're going to uh, you're going to save some money on the, the supply side. Some of these uh, slides have some interesting flash. Uh, they were put together last night for me. Uh, you've seen these pictures from Syracuse. This is the plant that you're going to go look at. It's all crammed into a couple shipping containers. And the cool thing is, 
they brought it over here on what a couple semis, yeah. dropped it off on site, plugged it in, and it was good to go. Um, basically, uh, when they talk about our directions, 2011, you can go online. We're university-wise, we're looking for uh, community development. We spend a lot of time. We've got a couple people from the Port Authority here. Uh, we work with the city, work with Bowling Green, uh, Northwest State. Uh, we really do a lot of outreach with, we're, we're working on innovative technologies here and we're trying to be leading edge. Then we share whatever we learn with our uh, surrounding areas. And basically this project is gonna be hopefully uh, a good business development for the region. And uh, we're even, uh, a further one that we're looking at is uh, we're like doing a composting project with the city of Toledo. If that pans out, uh, a lot of food, uh, you'll see the leaves around town, a lot of that stuff will all get into the compost and then go back out into fertilizer for Northwest Ohio. Hopefully that'll develop out into a business eventually. Um, the transportation is the interesting one with the, the cogen that we own here. Um, basically, because it's in that uh, shipping container, uh, they're going to come along, and, and this is just kind of a fun picture, uh, the train with the shipping containers, that could have been our cogen. We could have been, um, uh, you know, down, uh, where was another good spot for these things? Was California was one of them? Uh, India. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> throw, throw it on a train, throw it on a plane. Um, basically, the, they'll size it up, they'll drop it off for you. It was, it was actually a pretty simple connection. The uh, picture up in the top is actually the Toledo Airport. Uh, could fly it around the country too. And then down here is uh, actually the Port Authority property. Thought you guys would, you know, uh, the administrator was kind of fun with the uh, pictures. But basically, uh, why cogen? Because uh, you put in one fuel, your point is to give up the backup power, but then we get this bonus heat out of it. We're going to go put this heat in our swimming pool over here. We're going to use that to heat our building over here. Uh, you've already seen by the previous people, it, it pays for itself. Now if I can take that same concept and go put it to the hospital, now I've got a completely backed up hospital. It, it probably won't be the same box because these have an incremental size limit to what uh, they're talking about. But it's fun to be at a university that allows you to have uh, bragging rights of being first. First LAG, first cogen. So that's the one that we're looking at. We, we have talked with Sam. Uh, we, we are, uh, actually we, we um, uh, JD Arms in the back and uh, Roger, you're someplace out there too. We were looking at, um, we have a study going on for putting the back of power, which will be cogen over at our hospital. Um, does everybody pay attention to supply side economics? Because I'm going through this a little bit fast, but basically, uh, Last year we bid our electric. We are, we're an uh, 8 million square foot campus. We had a $16 million uh, utility budget. Last year we came under our utility budget by $4 million. Then because of good bids and a decent utility profile, we reduced our budget by $1.3 million this year. So for people in business out there, that's you know, cash in your pocket you can go invest and do something else with. The interesting thing to see here is that the governor said, okay, you're going to take your 2004 standard, and that's basically energy per square foot around campus, and you're supposed to reduce it by 20%. You can see that over here in 2011, our degree days are down and our use is down, but that's the first time that we've ever been below our 2004 baseline. We're still behind what the governor mandated as being our, our final goal, but we're well on the way. Projects like the Capstone, Cogen with the Gem BHV, other companies coming to us and saying, hey, we want to put a wind turbine up here and try that. There's, and, and uh, there'll probably be some more federal money now to uh, do these kind of projects. Um, the fun one is that in uh, 2011, and I'm a data guy, uh, if you couldn't tell, uh, every business should be tracking their utility usage, no matter how big or how small. If you're a big enough campus, you're gonna have somebody on campus doing it for you. If you're a small business, there's outside companies that'll do this for you. But basically, uh, that's where the weather was, the green bar. So if you really wanna see something impressive is that in 2011, we're sitting here at basically the uh, 2004 energy use per square foot. 
In 2011, we brought the pharmacy online. We brought a bunch of other labs online. Uh, the uh, energy per square foot for labs is off the charts compared to what an office space will be or a warehouse. So we're, we're very lab heavy, but our use was flat. That's uh, good teamwork. There's a lot of people that weren't turning switches on in reaction to people being uncomfortable. A lot of times I tell people, our goal around here is to make people comfortable. Our second thing is to do it efficiently. Basically, the whole thing of the University of Toledo is to work on the sustainability. We're trying to build our community because we look at it from the community point of view is that if the community isn't strong, then there's no point in us being here. My kids won't have a place to go. My grandkids won't have a place to grow. So I'm sure a lot of you feel the same way. I know, Bill Rudolph, your, your kids go to the same school my kids go to. Um, it's important to uh, plan and build for the future. We talked about the oil first thing off. You know, it, it's been a crisis since I was a kid. Um, the, the sad thing is, is most people that I talk to or present with, and I'll see some students tomorrow afternoon, they're still running their air conditioner 24 seven in their house. And they say, well, my dog needs air conditioning. Or um, they leave their heat on at 75 on a day like today when nobody's home. And I tell them, unless you've got a parakeet or some fancy bird, you don't need to do that. They don't understand that basically sustainability means you, you put it back the way you found it or you try to get it as close as that. I mean, how many people can actually, and oil-wise, this is a horrible example, but how many people can really afford to leave their car on while they're in here so that it's nice and warm when they go sit on it on a day like today, or it's air conditioned on a 95 degree day? Most people would understand that. Your house is still too cheap for you to worry about. They'd say, oh, it's just another 100 bucks a month. Until people actually start thinking about it and behaving right, we're not gonna have a, a global, or at least United States change. Anybody have any questions about UT? Because I know the place inside out, and I could walk you pretty much into any mechanical electrical room around here, or a lot of steam vaults, and hopefully none of them are steaming today. <laughs> well, if not, then I'll let you get to lunch. Thank you. Great.